Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 5-Minute Bitcoin, onboarding the masses five minutes at a time. Yesterday's episode, we spoke about the six traits of money. We spoke about specifically trait number one being durability. Today, we're going to talk about portability. And I apologize if you hear a lot of fuzziness in the background. It's because it's pouring rain and there will be some thunder occasionally. So my apologies. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Portability. We're going to use three things as the example. Cash, gold, and Bitcoin. Cash is easy to carry, but gold can be physically taxing to transport in large amounts. It's hard to trade when you have to hire an army just to pay your bills. I like that. That comes from the NYDIG website. Um, I'd like to speak a little bit more about it so that you can get a little bit more clear picture. Using the example of cash, gold, and Bitcoin, and transporting these three things, um, let's say that you wanted to send $100 worth of cash to Paris from anywhere in the world. Well, cash, $100. Well, you could uh, mail it and cross your fingers, or you could bring it physically, and you're going to spend a lot more depending on where you're at. If you're outside of Paris, you're going to spend a few bucks. If you're halfway around the world, well, then it's going to be into the thousands just to send $100 cash. So, let's move on to gold. Gold, all right, let's say you want to give someone in Paris... $100 in gold. Okay, same thing. You want to mail $100 in gold? Good luck. It might get there. And it's going to take a few days, depending on where you're at in the world. Or, again, if you want to physically deliver it yourself, I'd go first class for $100 in gold. That doesn't make too much sense, does it? Now, Bitcoin, on the other hand, if you want to send $100 in Bitcoin... From anywhere in the world to Paris, it's going to take about three to five minutes on the Bitcoin uh, primary layer of Bitcoin during on the Bitcoin blockchain. And it's going to cost you uh, the fees at any given time could be anywhere from two dollars to six dollars. But that hundred dollars is going to get there pretty quick. Now, if you send it on the second layer, uh, if you send it on, for example, the Lightning Network, well, it's going to get there in seconds, and it's going to cost you pennies. And you can verify that it's there easily. Uh, and it's a no-brainer. Now, let's bump this game up a little bit. Let's say you want to send a million dollars to Paris. All right, well, let's say you're in Miami, for example, and you want to bring a million dollars to Paris. You can mail it. If, but let me, if you're putting a million dollars cash in the mail, something's wrong with you. You probably shouldn't even be watching this channel. Now, if you want to do send a million dollars worth of gold, uh, you could do that. You could mail that too. But come on. I mean, people do it all the time. But just in security fees alone, uh, you're, it's going to be very expensive. You, you you might, oh, by the way, trying to bring a million dollars cash out of the United States is actually illegal and you it will get seized at the airport and you may never see it again. Same thing goes with gold. It will get seized if, if it doesn't get stolen in, in baggage or, or lost, lost. Now, let's talk about sending a million dollars in Bitcoin. Well, you could get on the same thing, million dollars. You can do it in several different transactions, which is what I would recommend. And uh, your fees would be a fraction of the cost of doing it the old fashioned way. Uh, now, if you did a million dollars on the Lightning Network, you'd pay pennies and it'd get there in seconds. Or you could mail one of these and it would take you know several days but it would cost you just postage. This is called a hardware wallet. 
This uh, hardware wallet uh, contains the crypto keys to participate on the blockchain, on the Bitcoin network. It doesn't physically hold your Bitcoin. It holds the keys so that you can participate in the network. Now, there's been some confusion about that. And in the future, we will go in depth into, well, what a wallet is and how it allows you to store the keys, the keys that allow you to participate on the Bitcoin network. We'll talk about that in the future. But that's my time, ladies and gentlemen. It's been five minutes. My name is Frederick Mann. This is 5-Minute Bitcoin, and I'm reminding you all to dollar cost average, hodl, and self-custody. God bless you all.